How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Marvel's final Phase 4 film, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And I just want to preface this by saying that this video will contain very heavy spoilers, so be warned before you watch this. So, as of my thoughts on the original Black Panther, I thought that it was okay. I liked Killmonger as a villain, but I found the rest of the film to be kind of lacking. I don't think it was bland because I actually think it is one of the more creative Marvel films that has some more brightness, a good score. I just found the CGI to be absolutely terrible. The story was lacking and a lot of the side characters I weren't really the biggest fan of. Now, I think in this film they completely turned that around and I've actually had a lot of problems with Phase 4 so far. I just have found most of the projects to be lacking or just straight up bad. But this film sort of deals with themes of grief just like the other Phase 4 films. Obviously to start off, rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman. Did they handle T'Challa's death well? I think so, and I think that this film was done with a lot of respect and a lot of care. T'Challa's death is the first thing that happens in this movie. It's very, very fast. They kind of go through it, but they don't rush it in a way that you'd think that maybe they would because there is obviously going to be a lot of callbacks to it all throughout the film. It clearly has a big emotional effect on every single person in this film, and I thought that the way they did it was just really respectful. Ryan Coogler's direction here is great. He had a very hard task sort of trying to set up this sequel without the main character and also doing it in the respectful way. Obviously, he, I think he did all of that really well, but I also think he balanced characters very well. I think the pacing here was really great. I was never bored. I have heard a lot of people complain about how long it was. I haven't really had a problem with the length, to be honest. I think that they balanced all the characters really well. They made it highly entertaining, and I thought it worked. I also really liked some of the cinematography, and I was a big fan of the score here as well. There were some scenes underwater that were incredibly kind of dark and murky, but I think that most of the cinematography is great, especially Wakanda. They always do Wakanda very well, and the world building there is also really good with the costumes, the makeup, everything. They introduce us to a lot of different tribes or sort of reintroduce us and bring back these characters and these different groups of people. And they bring them all together. And for scenes like funeral scenes and big parties, I think that it's just done very well. And I actually would say the same thing with Namor and the Talokan Nation. I thought they did a really good job when Namor shows Shuri all around the Talokan Nation. I think it was it looked absolutely beautiful. And the way that they did it was very cool. It was kind of an underwater version of Wakanda in the way that they did the kingdom and it made it very appealing and I really do hope that they give Namor his own film or show or something like that. I think that Tenoch Huerta did a great job here. He plays a very good villain. I feel like Marvel is actually starting to get better at villains. They're sort of starting to realize how important villains are in superhero projects. Denai Guerra as Okoye is, of course, great, along with Lupita Nyong'o as Nakia. I thought they did great in their side character roles, and I'm very excited to continue to see them. Angela Bassett gives a very big, ferocious sort of performance as Queen Ramonda, and I think that she is one of the standouts of this film. I thought she did all of her emotional scenes very well, and her sort of banter and bouncing off of the other characters like Letitia Wright Shuri was done very well and they did the death of her character very well as well. Winston Duke and Martin Freeman are very much in the sidelines. I'll talk about Martin Freeman's side plot in a little bit. Winston Duke does the comedic stuff well and I think Martin Freeman does that too. And Letitia Wright is obviously our main character here and I think that this film showed that Shuri can run her own film. And I think if they decided to give her a TV show, it could be really cool. I think that she's a great protagonist. She does the comedy. She was able to do the action scenes, and she was able to do the emotion. And I just really liked her character in this film. I think this is the best that we've seen her. Dominique Thorne plays 
Ironheart, and I did like her. I just kind of felt like this story was a little bit pushed in for no reason other to, than to just set up her TV show and have her appear in something else before they introduced her. But I did like her, and she is going to MIT, which also Ned and MJ are going to MIT. So I guess there could be a chance that we see Jacob Batalon and Zendaya on the Ironheart show. I think that would be really cool. The action sequences here are not as good as the first, but there are some really cool ones. The car scene was definitely reminiscent of the first. Not nearly done as good as the first was, but the fight on the boat was really cool with the way that all of the soldiers were hanging and all of the Atlanteans on the side of the boat. I thought that that fight scene was really cool. Also, the Killmonger scene was great in the dream sequence, and I think that Michael B. Jordan came back and did a good job sort of playing this character that in Shuri's head seems to care about her, but is also trying to get her to do what she needs to do. And I obviously thought that he was great in the first one. He is one of the better Marvel villains because there really aren't a lot of them. As for the Martin Freeman, Julia, Louis Dreyfus, or Val plot, Val shows up, which was a surprise to me. I did not know that she was going to be in this, but it's very clear that she's going to be playing a big role in the next phase. I thought that that plot was kind of shoehorned in as well, at least for the film. For the universe, it makes sense that Val would show up for a plot line like this, and I am very excited to see what other projects she shows up in. My next guess would probably be Secret Invasion. I feel like she will have some sort of role in that, and I'm really excited to see what they do. I also thought the emotions were done well. Like I said earlier, the deaths were felt throughout the film. It has a very big emotional impact on every character. And the way that they sort of showed every character's individual emotional turmoil was really cool. I did think that the film was lacking in side character development, though. The only character that I felt was really fully developed throughout was Shuri with her going through her grief process and the grief lesson that they give in this film, like the hold on to the loved ones and basically don't take revenge idea that has been done a bajillion times. It was kind of weak, but technically she does have a good character development plot in this. And I thought Namor had kind of a good one as well, but otherwise there really wasn't much character development throughout the film that I wish we could have gotten. And I thought that the ending with the child was fascinating. I'm curious to see where that's going. Very clearly, they are going to make him the next Black Panther. But are they going to put him on like a Young Avengers team? They're continuing to introduce a lot of young characters. But even this character is very young compared to the other ones. So I'm curious to see what they choose to do with that. So overall, I was a big fan of this film. I think it is one of, if not the best, Marvel Phase 4 film and definitely best out of the TV shows included as well. I am curious to see how Phase 5 goes. As of Phase 4, I have lost a lot of my love for Marvel and I'm hoping that Phase 5 can bring it back. I thought this was a great conclusion and I think I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of Wakanda Forever. I know some people really love it. Some people find it to be kind of mediocre. I'm curious to know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and see you guys.